Welcome to Practical Talk Time. I'm your host, Usha Kumar. I have with me today a beautiful young guest, Rachel Mednick. She makes children's clothing that are organically made, and she also makes skin care that are organically made. And uh, these are supposed to be very good for small children because we have to wonder about what chemicals we put on children's skin, which is the biggest organ in the body for, for anyone. And uh, I think being mindful of that and being mindful of what the environment is doing to uh, ruin the health of children, I think this is a wonderful enterprise that Rachel has gotten into. So please join me in welcoming Rachel Mednick. Rachel, welcome to the show. Hi, Isha. Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure having you here because I hear so much about the environmental pollution, how it's affecting our health, and especially things that go through our skin because the skin is the biggest organ in the body and we don't even think of the skin as an organ, right? Absolutely, it is and our biggest organ and it's the most absorbent organ that we have. So you have to be very careful about what you're putting on it. Exactly, and people worry so much about the food, right? organic food and everything for their children and then they forget that they're putting on clothes that is closest to the skin of these children, right? Right. And even the skin care that they put on children, creams and stuff. Absolutely. I think that's going to be an upcoming trend that you'll see and I have noticed it is already um, that people are becoming more and more aware of what they're also putting on top of their skin, not only what they're feeding into their bodies. I think people have kind of gotten it down now. We know that pesticides aren't good for you to eat and you want to be healthier and you want to eat organic and that can now kind of translate to one step further to what you're putting on your skin um, mm -hmm. and clothing can be one of the most detrimental things that you can put on because normal cotton crop is one of the worst pesticides producing crops. It uses a lot of pesticides for traditional cotton. Just to introduce you to our uh, viewers, you know, um, can you tell me a little bit about yourself, your background, educational background, and how you got into this particular line of business? Absolutely. So how I first started, I went to f school for fashion design and merchandising at Drexel University in Philadelphia. Um, and when I had graduated, I was left with bins and bins of all this scrap fabric that I couldn't really make anything out of that would fit me or any of my friends. and I wasn't really sure what to do with it and along the same time my little cousin Lucy was born and sh when she was born I said okay let me make some things for her as gifts so what I started doing was I would buy blank onesies and I would sew appliques onto the onesies and dresses. Oh, oh with the leftover fabric. Yeah with the I leftover see. fabric so it was always it was a way for me to reuse I've always been very passionate about reusing, recycling and not producing waste so this was kind of a great way to take these bins and bins of fabric that I had nothing to do with and put them to good use. Um, so that's pretty much how I started and then it's kind of evolved But how did there. you uh, get into fashion studies? Oh, how did how, I decide? Yeah, that was my yeah. major, that was a long time ago. How did you Let's pick that say. major and why? I always, I was raised very creatively to say the least. Um, my sister's a painter, we were always raised yeah. with doing arts and crafts and projects and for me, it's in my blood. I need to be doing something creative all day, every day, or I just don't feel right. Um, so fashion design was one of those things. I started in middle school, I think. One of my friends had taken a class, and so then I had also taken a class. I did some classes in high school at FIT, which was a great experience and kind of got me to know a little bit FIT more about the FIT is Fashion Institute of, of Technology. Technology in Manhattan. Um, and when I was applying to colleges, I decided I had to give it a shot. So I applied to schools with fashion design programs, but I decided I didn't want to be in Manhattan and I didn't want to just go to a fashion school. I wanted to have like the college experience with the sports and all that other stuff. Oh, I see. Um, so that's how I ended up at Drexel and that's how I ended up doing Lucy and Leo. And in your studies, what, what all courses did you take? I mean, what were the main ones? I took a lot of different things. I kind of had 
uh, I got a little bit of both backgrounds and the merchandising end and also the design end. Oh, I see. Um, so I got to take a lot of fashion illustration classes. Those are my favorite. I think I took probably Did like you have to learn to sew? Extra. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I'd be in the sewing lab sometimes <laughs> till 3 a.m. And you'd be there at night. I learned how to make patterns, do all the sewing. I learned about different types of fabrication, um, all sorts of that stuff. The well, I myself used to sew doll's clothing. Yeah, that's with all I the used to that when I was a kid pieces that too. you had around the home. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, I, I even took courses in drafting, designing, and sewing separately, but not from my regular college course, which yes. I learned it separately. You know, Singer Sewing mm -hmm, of course. Machine Company, you know, they yeah. used to have a Singer Sewing School. Yeah. I so. have one of their very old <coughs> machines. I have one of their industrial machines, which is really cool. They're still um, good, right? <laughs> they're great. This one I don't use as much because it's just a straight stitcher and I can't do anything yeah. except go straight. And yeah, I can't and even the reverse. modern ones do so much but more. I love it and I'll keep it forever just because it's so cool to have one of those original machines. Definitely. So now you graduated, and then with the so I graduated, leftover clothes, you yeah. started doing appliques, and yeah, then how I did you that. how did you come about making children's clothing? So I started doing this for my little cousin Lucy, who was born a couple years later. She had a little brother named Leo. So that's around that same time. I had been doing crafts fairs and things like that, and I had been living in Philly for a couple years after I graduated. Oh. Um, and I just, I started doing it more. I got a great response. People loved what I was doing, which was really exciting. And then I wanted to take it to the next level and I really wanted to start manufacturing my line. It was really important to me that not only was it organic, but it was also made in the United States. And the other appliques that I was sewing onto my original onesies, those were made all over the place. They weren't necessarily always organic and it was hard for me to control it and really get the quality that I had wanted to oh, get. I see. So initially it was just any scrap fabric you had. Mm -hmm. And then, so w when you started making clothing for your niece and nephew, no, cousins. My cousins. Cousins, yeah. Lucy and Leo. Lucy and Leo, yeah. And that's the name of your <laughs> yep. company too. So when you started making this clothing, that uh, in, at that time, how did you think of making organic clothing versus just any children's clothing? I'm actually not even really sure how that evolved. I, I've always been very health conscious mm. um, and just very aware of that. And I, the fashion industry can be so detrimental to the environment sometimes. And for me, that was something that I didn't really want to contribute to, yeah. but I still wanted to be involved in the industry. So this was kind of a way for me to marry both things I was interested in. Um, a lot of production involves a lot of use of harmful dyes that's dumped into the water. There's a lot of water use, especially with denim, is one of the most harmful things to the environment that you could possibly produce. I see. Um, so this way, when things are certified organic, it's from beginning to end, and it's in the farms. It helps the farmers. They're not breathing in those chemicals. Doesn't matter what fiber you use. How about the polyesters and are those synthetic those are fibers? Those are synthetic, so they're not grown, so they're, they can't be organic. So the things that can be organic are cotton. So you don't, you don't use any synthetics? Mm -mm. Okay. Every once in a while I will have like a blend where it's a little bit of a jersey or a spandex, but it's usually like 3% of oh, I see. Like whatever that is mm. to, you know, 90-something percent. Of the entire clothing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so you use natural fibers? It's all natural fibers, and, and they're all they're organically grown. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm looking at this and they all feel so soft, right? Yes. And <clears throat> I'm just wondering, earlier I was given to believe that clothing manufacturers added chemicals in order to soften them up. So how do you soften yes. these? Yes, so this is very true. So organic cotton doesn't go through the same harsh processes that regular cotton goes through. So it doesn't have the pesticides from the beginning. It doesn't. So right go from those, the growing stage. Right from the growing stage, you're going to get softer cotton. Um, but then cotton produ chemicals. production would be very low if they didn't use pesticides. They there, used right? they used um, different techniques. They do a lot of cross population with the growing. Um, I know I read recently there are certain bugs that eat the bugs that eat the bugs that eat cotton. If that oh, makes I sense. See. Yeah. Okay. So they kind of do it that way, um, and it's. It's better for everybody. 
it, and the farmers that are in the fields are not breathing in those harmful pesticides and harmful chemicals. Um, yeah, not just the farmers, the farmers and their families, right? And their right? families, it, and right? The people nearby. that live near the farms mm -hmm. that can get into your drinking water. And people that drink the runoff water. So it's really about thinking about it on a more global perspective of what are we doing to our earth and making yeah. these little decisions each day or when you shop just to kind of take that extra step further and just give it a thought and think about what you're contributing to. Yeah, I, I'm just reading a book, you know, written by um, a gardener who's now passed on, but uh, she used to do organic gardening right here in Connecticut. And farmers all over the country used to come to see whether it was really true that she was growing all these vegetables and some fru flowers uh, using just organic uh, manure and with no pesticides whatsoever. So no fertilizers, no pesticides. And people just couldn't believe it. And this was just you know more than 50 years ago. And, uh, and then she was, and she writes very strongly that, yeah, you can grow healthy plants that can really stand up to insects and other things. And yeah, a little bit will be lost to some of these, but mostly these healthy plants, they seem to produce well and you know, we don't have to eat all the pesticide residue with right. it. So you're saying now with cotton, you can do the same thing. And in that book also, she mentions how, you know, she didn't even think about the global impact of this. You know, she was just doing it for her family, for her, in her garden. Right. But then it does have global ramifications, right? Absolutely, definitely. My, one of my big goals is just to educate people and just to kind of prompt that question when you are buying something, just to take it that one step further and really think about it and think about what you're putting on your body. Um, and I know a lot of people will argue also that you can you know, wash your clothes so doesn't the pesticide come out. But in certain fabrics, especially the darker colors, there's so much dye to get that rich dark color that it in theory, it might never wash out. I mean, it will eventually. Okay, we have to back up a little bit on this. Um, you know, one thing is we are using organically grown fiber, basic right. fiber, whether it's cotton or even with, if it's some other fiber. Right, so we, we also use some flax fabric, soy, and hemp. Okay. Um, hemp is a really interesting fabric to use, and that's been more and more on the rise. People are using that and it doesn't require any pesticides to grow. So hemp by nature is organic, which is really cool. Well, the plant is very resistant to everything. Right. Okay. Um, so once we do that, you know, we are saying, okay, now we have the good fiber to start with, and now in the processing, again, these generally are processed with chemicals, and you're saying now you're going to process with the least chemicals or with no chemicals? Right, exactly. And the dyes that we use are all low-impact dyes, mm -hmm. so they're better for the environment. There's not as much runoff into the water, um, and they're just not as harmful. So there's not those same... And these farmers are right things. here in the U.S.? There are some. Or, there are a lot in the U.S. The um, right now, since I'm still a smaller company, I have to order my fabric I have to import it, okay. Um, but like everything is no child labor. We always make sure that they're certified organic, that their factory workers are treated correctly. I actually used to order from this one really awesome company that I don't have in my spring line, but I used for my fall winter line called Indigo Handloom. And they're based in India, and the workers actually work from their own homes. A lot of them are moms. They can stay home with their kids, and they have the looms in their houses. Mm -hmm. um, they make their own hours, and they hand loom everything. Yeah, so. India is very big on handle. Yeah, so it's amazing, and they, I love that they can make their own hours and work from home. Um, I know that's important for a lot of moms to be home with their kids, so that's something great that we want to support, well, that's certainly. good. So we are not using, uh, you know, poorly paid people, but we have people right. that are comfortable in their own homes and doing right. this as a hobby. Right. Um, also, uh, we want to come back to the point where, you know, we talk about the skin absorbing a lot of things in that environment, mm -hmm. in the air and what's put on it. Right, Can you talk so about that? Um, I think it's the Organic Trade Association, I think is where I read this, um, but I'm not 100% sure that babies absorb 60% of anything that you put on their skin. I see. So that's a lot, that's a big number. Um, 
And it's just like what you're putting into your body you have to think about, also what you're putting on your body you have to think about. And especially on babies, their skin is super sensitive, super absor absorbent. Um, I know there's been a few studies done with people with eczema or very sensitive skin mm -hmm. that when they switch to organic cotton, they don't have those same problems that they were having otherwise. I see. Yeah, I think cotton is the fabric that most people can tolerate. Right. And uh, I, I, I had a friend, you know, in, um, back home in India. Her father was wearing, you know, polyester pants because he was a doctor and he was going to work and mm -hmm. he was wearing polyester pants all the time. At some point he developed something like an eczema. And then he kept wearing the pants and he didn't realize that he was actually allergic to the pants and those rashes were a result of the allergies to the yeah, you know, absolutely. polyethylene. And, <clears throat> and then finally, you know, it got to a point where he didn't realize and then by the time he stopped and they tried to treat his um, skin condition, he succumbed. And he was a very young man, he, he wasn't even that old at that point. So people don't realize how harmful some of these polyethylene clothing can be. Mm -hmm. and they don't realize that rashes can be caused by that. Many people know of rashes from wool, right? Right. Sometimes, although wool is supposed to be a natural right. well, fiber, it's a natural, fiber natural too, fabric. But it can be a little bit itchy, so that can irritate you for different reasons. So not yeah. necessarily what it's dyed with or what it's yeah, because of the Yeah, because of the the fibers the, are a little The fiber bit rough. itself is a little sharp, and right. uh, yeah, that can irritate. Right. Yeah, that's true. So, do you use wool and wool for children's clothing? I at haven't all? used a lot of wool yet. Um, it's something we haven't really done too many sweaters and things like oh, that I yet. See. But it's something we're starting to do. Okay. Which is very exciting, and there is a lot of organic options for that as well. Yeah. Which is I mean, great. in fact, I wear silk or cotton sweaters because I have the problem with wool. <laughs> yeah, a it's lot of people itchy. do. It's very itchy sometimes. Yeah. So one of our big goals is to keep everything very, very soft. I see. Um, and I even have some of my little customers will tell their moms that they love the dresses and they want more because it's so soft. Yeah. Oh, they like it because it feels good it on feels their skin. It feels good. And so <clears throat> what are the dyes they use for this? They use dyes that they so, have to use dyes, right, in order to right. get some color. A lot color. of them are vegetable-based, though, which is really oh, neat. Oh, I see. Um, and I'm not an expert on the exact dyes that are used, but mm. they all are low-impact and mostly vegetable-based. Okay. And then when you wash them, the dyes don't wash off? or they No, nope, everything stays pretty. The color stays the there. The color stays pretty good. Yeah. Okay. And all my stuff, we make sure it's machine washable for so it's easy for moms to throw in and out, and we always recommend to line dry it or hang it to dry it to get the most wear out of it. I but see. organic cotton also, a really cool fact about organic cotton is that it actually lasts longer because it's not put through all those processes yeah. during production and it's not ripped apart and teared and so it maintains its original fiber content, which is really cool. So you'll actually get a lot more washes out of something that's organic cotton. These clothing that you have here, these are all made here, stitched here, mm -hmm. but the fabric itself could be imported. Exactly. Is what you're saying. Um, right. Are they all made of cotton, or does any of um, this so have hemp? These dresses are here. The um, short and the skirt that are hanging on the front, those are made with a soy flax blend. Oh, I see. Also blended with cotton. So okay. they're all organic. Are they strong? Uh, I mean, will they tear easily? No, mm. it's a pretty thick fabric, and it, yeah. it's pretty. The it fiber up. lasts? Yeah. How many washes would it last? Yeah. I mean. Oh my gosh, I don't even know. <laughs> I mean, I think they'll last a long time. I think certainly as long as your kid will fit into they it. They will though. grow anyway. Yeah, Children are going to grow. but they're great yeah. for hand-me-downs, and I always recommend with the dresses, especially like this one here, yeah. that as they grow taller, we cut them so that they can also be worn as tops. Oh, so I see. So you can do it with a little legging or a little pair of oh, jeans or something like that which is great and it's another way to kind of keep the use for longer instead of like throwing it away and we always you know tell our clients to pass it down because it will last it'll last for a long time yeah it's good that you're making them here to begin with and uh, do you only have these styles or do you have do you make more styles there's a few more styles up on our website at lucyandleo.com okay. 
Um, and it's exciting to make them here in New York. When did you start making them? I started manufacturing about a year ago, I think. Okay. Probably about last June. Yeah, so yeah. almost. I'm sure a lot of a uh, young moms, you know, moms for the first time or young moms of very small babies and even grandparents, I think, are going to be very interested in knowing about this, knowing that there is some clothing available for children who can't tolerate other fabrics and, and who don't want dyes and chemicals seeping through their skin. Absolutely. So I think that's going to be a wonderful thing. And it's good that you're making it here. So, so I'm yeah. hoping some people are getting employed. Yes, absolutely. Trying to manufacture it's, this. It's something I'm very proud of to do. Um, we have looked at other places to manufacture, and it might be something we do eventually, but for right now, I'm very excited about manufacturing in the United States and help kind of keeping the garment industry alive here because it used to be huge and thriving, and now so many things are exported. Um, and I love it for me. It's really special to be able to go visit my factories and meet the workers and know who they are. And, you know, they're not just like some person sewing somewhere across the world. Yeah. I actually know know them by name, and the which idea. is really neat. Um, um, right cool. now, where do you sell them? Just uh, in the tri-state area? Yeah, mostly just on my website. We'll ship nationally. Oh. Um, we are in one store that's in New Preston, which is not too far from here. Um, mm -hmm. And we do a few different pop-up shops in the wintertime. You can find us in Bryant Park in Manhattan during the holidays. Oh, We're I there see. from the end of October till the beginning of January, and we have our own little store. Um, which is a lot of fun, and I love getting to meet my customers and hear their stories um, and hear how they found us and what they love. So that's really exciting for me. It's nice that you started making children's clothing because I think that's where we have to start, right? From the time a child is born, trying to protect the child from yeah, <laughs> all the unwanted absolutely. dyes and chemicals and, and pesticides. And it's important too to kind of educate your children from a young age. And I don't know that all of them can kind of grasp the concept, but I think with the organic food and the healthy eating and just kind of that whole perspective, mm. they can start to understand a little bit more about it. How do your um, niece and nephew like this? They clothing? love it. I don't think they quite understand that it's named for them yet. How big are they? <laughs> Lucy's going to be five next month, okay. and Leo is two and a half. Okay. And they're actually going to have a new little baby sister at the end of this month. Okay. So they're very excited so about that. So you have to that. design some I new. Know, I'm going to have to You need a something. new design for the new one. <laughs> yes. Right? Um, so as uh, Lucy grows, now are you going to make clothing I have sizes to make bigger, bigger sizes? and bigger? Absolutely. So what sizes do you have yes, currently? So right now I start at newborn and we go up to a size 5T. Okay. Um, which Lucy is rapidly growing out of, so we're going to need to start expanding the line a little bit, I think, certainly, for her. I think, especially with today's, uh, you know, active lifestyle of these little children, you might want to make things that are nice and movable, right, that moves clothing, Absolutely. that moves with them. Yeah, that's a big goal of ours, is to make sure that they're very comfortable and they mm -hmm. can move around and they can play. You know, you don't want to have the kids restricted by any means. Do you have different kinds of clothing for each season? We do. We usually do a line for fall, winter. And uh, then is that thicker material? Yeah, mm -hmm. and then we do a line for spring, summer. So for fall, winter, um, we do, you know, things with longer sleeves. It's a little bit of a thicker fabric. Okay. We'll do some other things like vests and denim and different things like that. Yeah, and denim, you were just saying about denim dyes that are really harmful. Right. So, so how do you get around that? What do you do? Vegetable dyes. Oh, these are vegetable dyes. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to get the same color like you would in traditional denim. Okay. Um, but I definitely think that that's beautiful and it's something that a lot of people do appreciate and are looking for something a little bit different. You can go anywhere and buy a regular pair of jeans, yeah. but this could, kind of has a different look. Could children be allergic to vegetable dyes too? Have you come across any? I haven't come across that at all. I mean, anything's possible, so I'm sure that exists. Um, but I, I haven't really come across that in any way. So no one's had any problem with these? Not that I so know far. of. Not that I know of, but it's still very new, and there hasn't been a lot of studies done on this yet. Do your uh, fabrics have any finishing chemicals on them? No. 
So that's one of the other things that we avoid. So we don't do any sleepwear, we don't do anything flame retardant or anything like exactly. that. Exactly, I wanted to ask about that. Um, because flame retardant uh, clothing, they so have chemicals on them. Yes, very and Sometimes they're really bad ones actually, yes. they say. Right? Yeah, there's a lot of chemicals used in clothing. I think the one that most people are familiar with is formaldehyde. Um, I know a lot of people remember that from biology class. Yeah, they when, is, when is it used? In a um, it can be used through different stages, so it depends on what the final product is. Oh. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what chemicals are used. I, I in heard that you know, a lot of Chinese uh, manufactured clothing, they're just doused with formaldehyde before being packed and shipped because uh, if, if they didn't do that, because of the starch and whatever else in the cloth, you know, moisture, that it could grow fungus. Yeah. So to avoid clothing from getting fungus and getting musty by being packed and kept in, uh, I don't know, in a bin, in a container for mm -hmm. a long time, that's why they use formaldehyde. Yes, there's definitely a lot of uses for it, I'm sure. Um, I don't use them, so I'm not an expert in that area, but I always so think it's best to not use them and stay away from it. I think you can even smell the difference also on your clothes. Yes. A lot of people you know, say that to me. A lot of my customers like, oh, it smells so good, yeah. and it smells different than regular cotton because it doesn't use those chemicals. So it's wonderful that you don't use formaldehyde and uh, flame retardant uh, right. clothing. But for children's clothing, do you have to have flame retardant things by law? By law, if it's sleepwear, sleepwear, I believe, so we don't do any sleepwear. Um, but I think recently I did read something that they took that law away mm -hmm. because it was actually making it worse than better. And I there see. were some kids that did catch on fire because of all the chemical. Yeah. So there's, I've read, read a lot of articles going back and forth on that, and I'm not sure what the final verdict was. Yeah, recently I read somewhere that even in the Army, um, now, uh, Certain fabrics are banned for the you know because soldiers cannot wear them because that seems to have given them more burns when you know right in in, in war times they get really burned okay. badly and uh, so now with you know without these clothing they do better. That's <laughs> Thank good. you very much, Rachel. That was wonderful. Thank and you I'm, so much. And I wish you all the best with your new organic clothing line. And, um, and we didn't talk about the skin care. We'll do that in the next show. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. And um, stay tuned again for next week at the same time in order to watch the skin care line.